Blessings, beloved. Welcome back, Anastasia, Cosmic Astrologer, with you again today. Right, so today's uh, little small video is going to be on the new moon in Virgo, which is happening in a few days' time. And um, it's actually quite a special new moon. I mean, new moons are really beautiful within themselves anyway, but what I had a little look at was that um, the moon in Virgo, which is going to be at 17 degrees of Virgo, if you guys remember, I've spoken about what's called Sabian Symbols, which is this book here. And, you know, quite often when I'm doing a chart reading or when there's a, an eclipse or a new moon, I read the Sabian symbol for the degree of whatever it is I'm looking at because sometimes it holds a really powerful message and I feel that in this case with this new moon it does and um, the message is um, really very interesting and I'll read it to you in a moment but the reason I think it's probably um, more interesting and, and probably more uh, relevant to this new moon because this new moon has an opposition um, from Neptune. And the Sabian symbol, its its message and the energy is very much a Neptune type of energy. So it's very interesting to me that this new moon has this opposition from Neptune. So I'll talk about the, the new moon um, shortly. And we'll also just discuss briefly what's happening at the moment with the rest of the planetary energies. Uh, we have some forward movements and direct movement with planets, which is great. And very soon, uh, well, we had Mercury go direct on the 19th of August, which wasn't so long ago. Um, we had Mars go direct on uh, the 28th of August, which really was just uh, a week or so ago. And um, tomorrow, the 6th of September, uh, Saturn goes direct. So that's that's good news really because Saturn can be a very difficult energy, you know, whether it's direct or retrograde, but certainly when it's retrograde, um, it really forces us to really go back and reevaluate uh, what we've been working on essentially. So I want to talk a little bit about Saturn's movement uh, going forward. And um, <clears throat> Mercury will also move into Virgo shortly. What else do we have? And Venus will move into Scorpio and she's in her shadow period, uh, which just means that she's getting ready for her retrograde period. So Mercury moved out of his shadow, and he went direct, and now Venus is going to take that journey so i guess um oh, and also pluto pluto <laughs> pluto goes direct on the 1st of october pluto went retrograde on the 28th of april this year so it's um quite a long time more than half the year i think is it yeah, about six months of retrograde motion of Pluto. So um, the first thing I guess is I just want to talk about the new moon which occurs as I said at 17 degrees of Libra and that's in if I can just share my screen which will remind me of the date I think it was the um, 10th of September if my memory serves me correct. Let me just uh, get rid of that, get rid of that, and here we go. So 10th of September 2018, 4.02 a.m., that's Australian Eastern Standard Time. So this is a chart for Melbourne. Now, naturally, wherever you are located, um, things will shift accordingly. So it's not important to pay attention to where planets are located in this chart because it will be different for every single location. So here's the new moon in Virgo at 17 degrees. 
and uh, thank goodness it's not an eclipse. As I've said, we have completed the uh, eclipse seasons for this year, so we've got a, a few months um, till the end of the year where we just have a break from the intensity of the eclipses, which have been extremely challenging for many, many people, as people are also um, letting me know whether it's through emails, social media or readings that I do. The eclipses have been a really trying, testing period for everybody this year. Um, incredibly intense because there's been a lot of Pluto energy and um, lots of different things going on. Okay, so this new moon, as you can see, 17 degrees of Virgo, is actually opposite Neptune. So what does that mean? <laughs> I guess what, what it's suggesting is that you know, we naturally we just unpack the very basics of the sign of Virgo. So this new moon is taking us into a month, you could say, of um, really focusing and planting new seeds, as it were, uh, towards our health and our well-being, essentially, mind-body connection. Um, and it's also our, our service, you know, the service that we, we give to the planet, you know, to Earth, to people around us, and to ourselves as well. So it's a service, serving type of energy, um, but not slavery. <laughs> so, you know, I'd just like to draw a distinction there. Um, so the, the focus very much of this new moon has got to do with well-being because it's in Virgo, health, you know, diet, exercise, nutrition, all those sorts of things. Um, your work, your daily work, your daily routine, you know, all that sort of stuff. It's, it's a time where we can really just um, begin a, a new something in that field. You know, depending on where this new moon falls in your birth chart. So wherever, whatever house it falls in, well, that's the area of life that's going to be, um, that's going to be influenced or uh, where the energy is going to be planted. So it's it's two layers then that we need to unpack. It's what area of the chart does it fall in for you? And then we need to take into account the fact that it's in Virgo. So that area of life is the area where we're, we are going to potentially um, plant some seeds and some, some new ideas and new growth work for how we want to become healthier, you know, essentially. But that Neptune being right opposite that new moon adds a very different flavour to it. It can bring in, you know, components that connect to um, having rose-coloured glasses, you know, perhaps um, seeing things very idealistically. And because Neptune is the complete opposite to the Virgo energy because it rules Pisces and it is in Pisces as well, so the Neptune component is the, the area of life where we connect to, to oneness, to source, where we transcend, where truth resides, the ultimate truth. So Neptune's influencing this new moon, um, and I think we need to be very, very careful about that to um, not sort of project, you know, unrealistic, idealistic, uh, notions into whatever is whatever it is we're trying to uh, eventually actualize with, with this new moon's energy. You know, Neptune is always connected to disillusionment and disappointment at its worst, and at its best, it's complete transcendence and oneness and divinity and the union of that divine energy as we breathe. But at worst, like I said, it's disappointment and disillusionment. And the reason it's disappointment and disillusionment is because of um, this, that the Neptune energy is so not of this world, it's incredibly difficult to try and actualize it in this 3D dimension. So what we tend to do is project a lot of um, ideals and you know, what, what we dream of being the ultimate sort of experience, if you like. And the, the ideal is always um, a projected sort of version of how we want things to be or expect things to be. And naturally we project that onto, you know, the environment around us and to the people
people around us and nobody can live up to that projection because they are not that projection. They are not that Neptune energy that we are projecting onto them. And oppositions, which is what's happening here, it's Neptune opposite this new moon, oppositions can be polarised energies. At best it can be um, a beautiful sense of clarity and awareness, but at worst it can be polarised energies so we can project that Neptune and create these um, disillusionments which can leave us feeling quite disappointed. So it's important to understand um, this message that's there as well. I think uh, on a more transcendent spiritual level, you know, if someone is, uh, any of you, if you're working, you know, with your own spiritual path and journey and whatever that means for you, you know, whether that's practicing meditations, practicing yoga, um, practicing transmission, you know, all sorts of things we can be doing. We're constantly, you know, evolving our, our spirituality, our spiritual path. Well, this energy is very prominent for that because Virgo, as much as it is about work and service, it's also about purification. So, you know, the new moon in Virgo can really enable us to purify something in our life as well. And that Neptune energy brings in that transcendent truth, um, oneness, di divine, divinity, you know, expression. So it, the, I th the key factor is not to polarise these energies and project the Neptune out there, but rather try and connect with some kind of awareness of this Neptune energy opposing this new moon in your chart. So wherever it lands in your chart. Um, that's where it's going to be illuminated. Um, now, if you just listen to this, it's really um, quite fascinating. So I'm going to read the uh, Sabian symbol. Just pop out of this chart. Um, you just see something. Well, there's a few aspects to this new moon, actually. It's not just the opposition. Um, there's a trine from Pluto is a really nice supportive aspect. Um, the Mars is slightly too far. And then there's a very lovely um, sextile aspect from Jupiter. You know, so we have uh, both Jupiter and Neptune forming uh, pretty close aspects to this new moon. Jupiter is not a problem. It's not a difficult energy. It never is. The, the only sort of difficulty of Jupiter can be um, excess. You know, it's, it's a it's a, an excessive energy, so you know we might, we may just indulge too much, you know, when Jupiter sort of comes up. But that that will be defined and described by um, certain signs and certain positions that Jupiter is in, and so forth. In this case, the sextile to the new moon is just adding a beautiful flow of energy. Jupiter is actually supporting that new moon, so that can be quite helpful to eliminate this um, some of this. Uh, energy with the opposition, which can be a polarised sort of energy. And Jupiter is always about growth, expansion, gifts, blessings. So this new moon is receiving from Jupiter some gifts and blessings and expansion into what? Into the Virgo uh, energy, into the Virgo world. Wherever that new moon is in your birth chart, look at that now. Um, okay. So I just want to read you the Sabian symbol um, for this new moon, which is on page 162. Now, as I said, the Neptune opposition can bring about, you know, uh, disillusionment or disappointment, but at a more transcendent level, it's quite a psychic clairvoyant energy as well. And this is where the, the Sabian symbol uh, correlates to this opposition to Neptune, which is uh, really quite remarkable. So the, the phrase for this particular uh, new moon, the degree of the new moon, is called um, a Ouija board. <laughs> and the keynote is this, the ability to connect deeper recesses of the unconscious psyche and sensitiveness to psychic intimations and omens. The Ouija board 
is to be considered here a modern device similar to many ancient instruments used for divination and prophecy. Certain states of threshold consciousness are stimulated by such a use. And what the experience produces may vary greatly in quality and in origin. The release of unconscious material has lost the explosive force pictorialized in the preceding symbol. Yet at this stage, there is still no conscious and willful control over what reaches the ego consciousness. So very simply put, the implication is that um, psychic energies are going to be highly accessible during this new moon. There's going to be a component of our consciousness that's going to essentially open up and tap into um, some levels of psychic power or intuition. So perhaps that might be that for you, wherever that new moon is in your birth chart, in that house location, there is something that you will be able to access from a part of your consciousness that is not normally accessible so easily. Um, and that Neptune opposition really just highlights this very exact uh, energy and message. So it's a very, very powerful new moon for accessing levels of your consciousness that are otherwise not accessible. Um, and the ability to tap into um, perhaps some clearer visions or messages or things that you need to understand more of um, or to be more clear of, um, to have more insight about and to basically uh, understand more of. Now, I think it's worth saying though that just bear in mind when we tap into those uh, those areas of consciousness that the psychic field, we we need to be very careful because we're we're opening up into a field that that has many different levels um, of things in there. So the the dark and the light, as it were you know, in terms of experiencing it here on this earth plane, in this 3D dimension, which we see manifested physically and we also experience in our own sort of private life and internal world. Well, this dark and light component exists in the psychic world as well. So that means that we can, when we open those fields, we can tap into and connect to a number of different streams so we do need to be aware of what we're tuning into as well and and be mindful of what we're kind of opening up so i guess yeah it's just worth mentioning that because this new moon with this Sabian symbol and neptune opposite it it's um whilst on a at the highest sort of transcended level it's an energy that opens things up psychically for us which can enable us to tap into gifts, talents, uh, visions, all sorts of things. But equally so, we can tap into certain energies or vibrations that uh, we may not want to. So I guess the, the way to perhaps work with that is to have very clear intentions. Um, if you practice certain rituals, for instance, with new moons, um, if you do a meditation during this new moon, then you just may want to be, you know, very receptive to the fact that you're opening a sphere that contains a number of different uh, frequencies and you, it probably would be very useful to be very, very, very specific and very clear about your intention for accessing this psychic field and, you know, what is the purpose of that for you? What are you looking to access? You know, there's the, the old saying, be careful what you wish for, you just may get it. So anyway, that's that's the power of this new moon, which I think is incredible, uh, especially if you're working on levels that have to do with developing your intuition, uh, clairvoyant psychic abilities. Um, and that's not necessarily about you being a psychic or a clairvoyant, because I'm not talking about working in that field necessarily, although maybe you are one of those people and this would just be a great, great opportunity, great energy to 
further um, activate those uh, gifts or those doorways. But even just from your own personal level with yourself in your own life, where you're at at the moment, this may just be uh, a, a real uh, true opening for you where you can access things that are normally uh, not so easily accessible, as I said. Okay, so that's the moon in Virgo, which um, is on the 10th of September. So it's just a few days away. So have a, have a little reflection on that. Um, have a think about what you might want to tap into at this point in your life for your own evolution, for your own development, whether it's emotionally, mentally or spiritually, um, and just basically for where you're at in your life on a mundane level as well. What is it that you might want to um, activate more of, you know, and understand more of and, and get uh, deeper visions and deeper insights into? This is the chance to do it. All right, moving on. So um, just on an overall sort of sense of this, this um, energy, country energy update really is just covering uh, the next week or so. So I'm not going to talk about anything further than that necessarily. Um, I just wanted to emphasize that, you know, Mars, as I said, went direct on the 28th of August 2018. So, you know, we've had quite a few days now of Mars being direct, which um, would have alleviated a lot of tensions and frustrations for a lot of people where they can um, feel more, more connected to pursuing their goals basically, and uh, actualizing those goals and directing the energy. Um, Mercury went direct as well on the 19th of August. So, you know, we've had a period of a lot of, um, you know, re-evaluation and taking a step back and being forced, as it were, to go within. We've got no choice. When these planets go retrograde, they, they are asking us to go within and reevaluate and reassess. Now, some of us do that some of us resist it um, I think when we do things with resistance we naturally um, just bring up tension and friction so it's about finding a way to surrender to the, these energies and what they are asking us to do and just work with it to our best capability that's all we can do and it's it's not the same for you or for me or for every other individual it's a very different process for each of us the other thing is that Saturn goes direct tomorrow uh, which I mentioned briefly earlier and um, Saturn went retrograde in April of 2018 so it's been retrograde for quite some time and goes direct tomorrow so here we have you know the our, our world of our external sort of consciousness reflected to us, um, Saturn is very much our, an internal psychological consciousness that we create that uh, gets projected out there onto this 3D world, our environment, and the structures that we create around that. So wh wherever you are at this point in your life, if what you're actually attempting to create or further develop to actualize, um, you, you might be at a point where, you know, you've been working quite hard the last seven years to, to really develop um, your career path, let's say. Um, you might be at a point where the, the relationship part of your world is being impacted by Saturn. So, um, you know, the last seven years you've been working through relationship dynamics. Um, relating to others, understanding yourselves with others, things like that. Wherever Saturn is, um, it's going to spend two and a half years in a particular area of your chart, so two and a half years in a particular area of your life. And in that two and a half year period, it's going to have some retrograde you know, movements where it's uh, forcing you to go within. Now, Saturn, the, the way to really understand that, so there's many, many levels, but but one level that must always be considered is where does Saturn start off in your birth chart? 
wherever Saturn is located in your natal birth chart, from the moment of birth, as Saturn starts to move around your chart by a transit, what it's actually doing is it's carrying the energy of where it was born in your birth chart, what house it was in, and the inherent um, lessons and, and energy that you need to work through, karma <laughs> that you need to work through in the fourth house are carried through the fourth house. Sorry, I said that because I've got Saturn in the fourth. Um, you, you could have Saturn naturally in, in any one of the 12 houses. So wherever it is for you natally, just bear in mind that as it's transiting around the chart, it's taking with it its base, its foundation, which is where it was born when you were born. So as it travels around the chart and spends two and a half years in each part of your life, it's clearly, you know, um, it's clearly letting you know that these areas of life need some tweaking, need some adjusting, need some restructuring, um, need some rebuilding, um, need some maturity, some development. You know, Saturn forces us to, um, to mature and to take responsibility. And there's a lot of resistance to that, and especially when we're younger. Um, but depending on the shape, the condition of your natal Saturn will also um, speak to you as it's transiting around the chart in terms of what it is you need to be working on. But anyway, nevertheless, Saturn going direct now, it's been you know retrograde for about six months, so we've had to kind of put the brakes on things, and we have certainly had to put the brakes on things with Mars being retrograde. And now the energies are starting to all to move forward, not all of them, but Mercury, Mars, Saturn, and next is going to be Pluto. So there is certainly um, a suggestion that it's, it's time to start moving forward with things now. We've had a, a lot of this year where we've had to really uh, work through some very deep and intense um, experiences and that has meant loss, that has meant um, separation, that has meant transformation, uh, that has meant growth. All, all these things haven't really been easy for the majority of people and a lot of that has had to do with the eclipses. But Saturn moving direct is now sort of suggesting to us, okay, it's now time to start thinking about what your next step is in whatever path you are on, you know, wherever you are on your journey right now. But, but these steps in moving forward have very much to do with the structures of the world that you live in or the structures that you have created in how you perceive the world that you live in. Because we all perceive things very, very differently. So Saturn enables us to mature. It, it initiates us into maturity. It initiates us into taking responsibility um, for our own self. The best thing we can get, at, get out of Saturn, really, there's a, a few things, but one main thing is that we, can, we need to learn um, that we can have our own sense of authority, as it were, you know, until we do that, we just project that Saturn out there. So we experience it as it coming back to us. So we might attract um, bossy people, cold people, um, hard people, uh, people who dump all their stuff on us, responsibilities, people who expect so much of us, um, people who cut us off, you know, all that sort of stuff. That's all Saturn. So if we're experiencing a lot of that, we've got a pretty heavy dose of Saturn um, in our natal chart and or via transit as well. So if we are experiencing that, I think it's important to take a step back and have a think about how you can reclaim that Saturn energy so it becomes your own authority. You know, Saturn in ancient astrology ruled magicians. It's, it's the alchemist. So Saturn at a very uh, esoteric, transcendent level can be very, very powerful for being the alchemical master to your own life. The point is to transcend the consciousness of Saturn so that it's not projected out there and that it is integrated within so that it becomes a stabilizing force and a stabilizing authority to your own self. 
And therefore, that means taking responsibility for your mm. own life on every single level. That's when you can start to work with energy, uh, work with the Saturn energy within your own self and stop experiencing it as if it's coming to you from the world out there. And, you know, an example of that would be, for instance, the fact is that we'll, we'll almost always have governments, well, at least in the way the, the world is structured to date, we'll always have police officers, governments, um, you know, a, a number of different forces and structures that appear to dictate to us um, what is right and wrong, man-made law, and what we should or should not be doing. And there are many people on this planet that are very aware of these structures and forces in place, but it doesn't affect their life personally. Why? Because they're not projecting that Saturn onto these um, authority uh, establishments and figures. Saturn rules authority figures, period. So whether it's a policeman, whether it's a doctor, whether it's a government official, um, a president, whoever, this is all Saturn's energy. So learning how to integrate Saturn's energy within and creating our own sense of authority with it is the best way we can work with Saturn on a very healthy level. That takes a lot of work. That's not done overnight. You know, Saturn is not there um, for no reason. Saturn's energy is, is deliberately part of the cosmic picture because in this human form, we need to experience um, certain levels of consciousness developing and that includes a lot of lessons. And also Saturn is our karma as well, don't forget. So that's why Saturn is always very, very hard work. Karma can be good karma as well, though it's not always just difficult karma. That's another subject. Um, so... That now is the time to start moving forward with our Saturn world. That includes our obligations, our responsibilities, our duties and the role that we play or the roles that we play. While Saturn has been retrograde, we've been asked to take a step back and reassess and reflect on what we're doing, what we've created thus far and what needs to be adjusted or removed altogether for that matter. When Saturn is retrograde and Mars is retrograde, which they were and Saturn still is, there, there's, it's almost impossible to move forward in the motion that perhaps one would if, if they are feeling like they're, they're ready to just go for it and push, push through. Um, the retrograde motions will, as I said, will force us to reflect and take a step back. And we can either surrender to that and be patient or we can try and fight against it and resist it and, and therefore just experience um, extreme inattention and frustration. That's basically what results out of that. Um, so there's, there's a time for everything, in other words. You know, there's a time to push forward in things. There's a time to reflect. There's a time to take a step back. There's a time to reconsider. There's a time to reevaluate. There's a time to plant seeds. There's a time to further create and all of these uh, moments of time um, you could say are all uh, defined by these movements of the planetary energy so Saturn going direct tomorrow is going to really uh, enable us to now again start to proceed and move forward with what we've been creating now that can be in the last year for you it can be in the last seven years as I said that would depend and be defined through your actual birth chart and where Saturn is in your birth chart because you may be having a Saturn square Saturn transit in your life right now. You may be having a Saturn return in your life right now. Um, you may have Saturn um, entering your seventh house right now. You know, there's any number of uh, places Saturn can be and relative to uh, other planets, the relationships that it's forming are also going to describe the story of, of um, Saturn's forward movement for you now because Saturn moving forward is a collective experience, period. And, and Saturn in Capricorn is a collective experience as well. 
So in order to personalize um, and understand these energies from our own perspective in our own life and our own journey, we always need to relate it back to our own natal chart. And you need an accurate time of birth for that as well. Um, because if you have transiting Saturn on one of the angles, the cross of matter, ascendant, descendant, midheaven or IC, well, if you have the wrong time of birth, those angles, those four angles are going to be wrong in terms of the degrees they're in. What does that mean? That means that um, you might have transiting Saturn looking like it's right on your seventh house cusp at the moment, but because your time of birth is incorrect, in fact, what it means is that Saturn's not going to get there for another six months, or Saturn was there six months ago. That's just one example. So please, please, please understand the importance of accurate time of birth. The majority of people work with the wrong time of birth. That's just a fact. <laughs> so if you want accuracy, have your chart rectified. That's something I do, as I always say. Um, so... Yes, to get the most out of this Saturn uh, moving forward in the sign of Capricorn, you need to look at where Capricorn is in your birth chart. Wherever that is, then this is a time where you can now proceed forward, as I said, with um, the directions and structures of the conscious sort of psychological conscious projection you have of the world, your world, your structures, you know, the foundations that you have laid and have created what defines your role in life, you know, and that, that can be a number of different roles when it comes to that. You know, it can be with our family, it can be with relationships, um, and certainly in our professional life as well. But whatever the case, it's going to be a nice um, experience and feel of um, Saturn's energy moving forward, enabling us to... Um, to further pursue our goals and uh, further pursue what we have been working on for quite some time, I would say. And of course, with Mars, direct uh, similar message there. Where, where it's, I mean, everyone's going to feel this because it is a collective thing, as I said. So, um, Mars Saturn retrograde is probably one of the most frustrating periods that we've all gone through because. Mars especially, its inherent energy and nature is about pushing forward in life on every single level, really. So we've really had to um, be very, very patient with the goals that we've had and what, and what we've wanted to initiate and push through. And Saturn added to that picture as well. Um, and Saturn, you know, forces us to, when it's retrograde and it's uh, asking us to take a step back and reflect inside, that's not an easy thing to do because Saturn on a psychological level, on a classic psychological level, often connects us to fear, loneliness, depression, separation. Um, it's a very heavy, uh, dense, dark sort of energy, really. That's when it's operating at its uh, psychological worst level but as i said earlier you know at a more transcended level it's the the inner alchemist that works very very hard to purify um so i think i can leave it there um that's that's enough to kind of give you some pointers and some things to consider you know over the next week Saturn's going direct Mars is direct Mercury is direct and it's a beautiful moon ring in Virgo so have a think about where you're at at this point in your life and, and what Saturn is doing relative to your own birth chart um, but know that you can um, you'll feel uh, more um, the heaviness will dissipate and there'll be a, a greater sense of the ability to start to proceed forward again um, and not feel so sort of maybe frustrated or, or cut off, you know, from, from what you've been trying to actualise. Um, 
hopefully the certain retrograde period has enabled you to work through some things though because it you know it's not like um going retrograde for no reason or, or by accident it is asking us to do some work but on an inner level as opposed to the external level now it's time to get back in touch with Saturn's energy on the external level and um how we proceed forward you know in that way so i'll leave it there and um Feel free to contact me for uh, reading or education um, if you don't have an accurate time of birth. Don't assume your time of birth is correct even if it's a hospital time. Um, never assume it's correct un until you have it you know, rectified and, and it checks out with your major life events because the, the life events that you have will correlate with your time of birth. If they don't, then your time of birth is incorrect. It's very, it's as simple as that. Although the process itself to attain the correct time of birth is a very uh, complex and tedious process for the person who's doing it. All right, well, happy new moon in Virgo and happy Saturn uh, direct and um, have a good week and I'll see you guys soon with some more uh, astrological insight. Thank you. Bye.